right. The microphone is working? Yeah? Great, so we can start. Thanks to you for coming to this presentation. Uh, I'm Ed Wabai from Sour Phoenix and uh, Mathieu Dupré from Sour yeah. Phoenix as well. And um, well, we're gonna present you uh, a CPAS, which is a left energy project and it's used for critical infrastructures, mainly in the, in the energy sector and how we deal with uh, software, software supply chain security. A few words about our, our company, um, Sabwafe Linux. We are a Canadian and uh, European company based in Montreal and Rennes in France. Uh, we are doing uh, industrial products since almost 23 years now. We are doing a lot of different products uh, in the medical devices, robotics, avionics, uh, entertainment, and of course the, the energy sectors. We, we are a member of different groups uh, on the Linux Foundation since uh, more than a decade now, the Yocto project, and we are a member also of the LF Energy project. So actually I met um, personally RTE, which is uh, the French TSO, so they are transmitting the electricity to keep it short, and they are the largest one in, uh, in Europe. I met them in, uh, in Open Source Summit in Lyon in uh, 2019, and uh, well, they were uh, creating the LF Energy uh, uh, group, and they wanted to start a project about substations. So that's the purpose of CPAS. Um, so CPAS, it's uh, an open source solutions for substation. Um, just to explain to you substations, what is it in a few words? Um, it's basically um, um, a system to, uh, to deal with uh, the electricity transportation and distributions into the grid. It's, uh, without that, you cannot manage um, uh, the, the power distributions. And it's really critical in a way that uh, it manages the grid. And if you've got an issue on the grid, uh, it will be uh, a host, uh, hosting protection systems. So for instance, just imagine uh, you've got a, um, a tree uh, falling on the, on the high line. Uh, substations will detect that very quickly. We are speaking about milliseconds and would uh, uh, reorganize the grid uh, to keep it working. So um, CPAS is, uh, is an open source project and we actually aggregate tons of open source software. We are not reinventing the wheel and uh, we are using virtualization because we want to have a multi vendor approach. The idea is to have um, different companies doing different products uh, working uh, together on the same hypervisor and we believe that the virtualization could help to uh, uh, integrate third-party solutions that could be actually Linux systems, but also non-Linux systems for uh, some logging, monitoring, or so on. And um, of course, virtualization is uh, uh, it's got some uh, some weakness regarding the performance and um, on real time and uh, on network latency. But we made some uh, analysis and. Uh, uh, it works and we can achieve uh, the performance expectations uh, uh, for uh, many for protection systems that are very critical. In terms of cybersecurity, um, the usage of, v of VM uh, allows also to, uh, to uh, clearly separate different vendors' software and to make the, the, the overall management of that very easy. And yeah, that's it. Um, so just to explain a bit on the project, um, I'm the TSC chair of the project uh, and Mathieu Duplay is the first contributor, but there is also other uh, companies involved like RTE, uh, like G, and uh, Allender is also using that, Schneider is also coming. There is a lot of different uh, uh, partners involved and uh, that's uh, uh, very nice to see. So CPAS is a Linux distribution. Um, as I said, we are not reinventing the wheel. We are just trying to use open source software um, compatible for the performance expectations, cybersecurity expectations uh, for the energy. So we've got two flavors on CPAS. The first one is based on Yocto and, uh, and the second one on Debian. On Yocto, you can create your own Linux distributions from the source code and you can customize everything uh, by yourself. So it's good for cybersecurity and performance approach. While in Debian, you are more following the IT philosophy and you are not uh, 
you are only configuring and uh, not compiling, you are using pre-built packages. So inside about CPaaS, um, like every Linux Foundation project, we are, uh, there is different phase and we are one of the uh, uh, early adoption uh, projects. Um, and we, it shows that we've got um, intensive testing uh, process uh, that match industrial expectations. And we've got the OpenSSF best practice silvers. We are dealing with 20 repositories, about 2,000 commits. And we've got uh, two CI running actually, one in RTE offices and the other one in South Linux offices. We are running a lot of different tests, 700 tests. Um, we are doing tests on targets, so it means that we are flashing uh, just Linux distribution on real hardware and we are doing testing on that for each PR, uh, pull request, sorry. So it means that we can test functional tests to uh, ensure that we do not have um, any systemd services running, uh, failing, sorry. We can check that we've got uh, all, um, our logging system running. We can check some cybersecurity requirements and uh, there is a lot of tests covering that for permissions to check if you've got readerly rootfs, we've got all these SSH keys uh, with a certain right and so on. So it's, uh, there is a um, lot of value there and it's uh, very sensitive for the energy sector. And we want to maintain SEPA secure, so it means that we want to track security issues. We want to watch upstream fixes. So even we've got a lot of tests, there is of course new CVE coming. And uh, so CVE, so it's uh, the standard for that, it's common vulnerability exposure. This is an example of the well-known uh, Log4G uh, CVE that was really critical. But so the idea for us is to ensure that we are maintaining all the CVE. So how we do that? On the Yocto project, we actually have uh, an internal tool uh, named CVE uh, check uh, class that could actually uh, connect to a database, NVD database, and ensure that uh, um, for certain package and versions, uh, we, ha we have a CVE and we can monitor its status, patch and patch or ignored. The CVE fixing it itself can be done by the community, or you can do that by yourself because you are dealing with the source code. You can cre create or take an upstream patch and apply that for you. The Debian approach is totally different. You are just checking the notifications of um, CVE with the mailing list. So it's not, it's a manual operations. There is no uh, um, automatic way to, to get all the CVE and you've got a large amount of CVE to deal with. So it's, uh, it's a bit uh, uh, painful to be honest. And um, <clears throat> you can also check the, the CV status uh, via the Debian security tracker. The CV fix itself is delegated to a Debian maintainer, which could be good, but also it means that if you want to resolve that by itself and you are, uh, because it's very critical for your context, um, you could have variable response time and you don't have any contract with a Debian maintainer, except you are a specific contract done. So uh, it, it can be an issue, and of course you cannot do that by yourself. It would break the whole uh, Debian uh, approach. So current implementation is uh, to have um, CV check on CPAS Yocto uh, at each build mainly, so we can ch get all the CV and get just the status. But we've got we do have some limitations. We don't have the equivalence in Debian, and uh, the reports are not very interoperable. For the CV uh, collections, we need to do that at each build, so there is no notifications and we cannot manage correctly the CV. When I'm speaking about management, it's uh, um, to get the status and to uh, manage how to fix uh, a critical one and to ensure that we can mitigate that, them. So we want to use a standard way to do that. And the standard way is SBOM for software build of materials. And we want a tool to uh, manage all the CV per packages to track them and to ensure that we can mitigate um, on our system. So that's um, our expected workflow. We already have a CI running, we can generate SBOM. Then we would need to have a vulnerability tracker and we want to check the upstream vulnerability status and the CPAS vulnerability status uh, against the some vulnerability issues database like NVD or so on. And we want to ensure that we can uh, reduce as much as possible uh, all the vulnerabilities on uh, all systems. And it's a workflow that will run uh, every day and uh, as long as it could be. Thank you. So, 
So the first thing we need to, to choose is uh, which SBOM format to use. Basically, there is two major uh, standards. SPDX is the first one for uh, so Software Package Data Exchange. It is a Linux uh, Foundation project. And the, actually, the 2.2 uh, version of SPDX is standards uh, with the ISO, uh, it is a st uh, ISO standard. Uh, the SPDX uh, 2.2 also fit uh, the USA uh, SBOM requirement, NTEA, for instance, and the, the later evolution. The other main uh, format is uh, CycloneDX for Cyclone Data Exchange. It is uh, uh, created by the uh, foundation, the OWSP foundation. It not only deal with uh, only with software, but it's a full uh, stack of uh, bit of material. You can also, for instance, uh, have uh, hardware uh, bomb of your material. Uh, here we we summarize uh, the advantages and drawbacks of each uh, standards. We also consider uh, the future SPDX 3 version, which is actually uh, in draft. Uh, the main advantage of Cyclone DX is it, it's a full BAM uh, support, not only software. Uh, it also provides uh, an easy and a build, uh, build way to, to support uh, vulnerability and exploitability information. So how, uh, if, uh, for example, a CV uh, affects you, if you have patched a CV or if you mitigate the, the CV, you can uh, describe it in your SBAM. The drawback of the Cyclone DX is uh, it is not a standard, a standard yet, and uh, the main drawback for us it is not supported by, by the Yocto project. So um, we, can't do, you, we can't generate uh, Cyclone DX uh, on Yocto. The SPDX 2.2 and 2.3, uh, the SPDX 2.2 is, uh, is standard. There is a lot of subparty and, and, and a lot of two integrate and can generate SPDX 2.2 uh, or 2.3 uh, uh, SBOM. And the uh, Yocto project can generate uh, SPDX 2.3 as well. Um, as a Cyclone DX, we, it is possible to, to have uh, vulnerability information on the SBOM. It uses uh, an external, you have to reference the vulnerability as an external reference. The drawbacks of the uh, SPDX 2.2 is uh, for the moment only uh, software bill of material is supported. The next uh, version of uh, SPDX, the uh, 3 version, uh, uh, fix that and uh, it had uh, a lot of uh, on the, a lot of uh, bill of material uh, like a uh, bill of material they also introduce uh, a feature uh, a profile feature for instance uh, if you need only to, to support a license you can only uh, implement the general uh, SBAM profile plus the, uh, the license profile. Uh, they rework uh, how the um, vulnerability information are, uh, are, um, are displayed and, and are linked inside the SBOM. They are not uh, built-in uh, keyword. The main robot uh, of uh, SPDX3 it is not uh, released really yet. It is uh, in draft for the moment, so uh, there is uh, no, no tool which support uh, SPDX3 for the moment. The good news for us, there is tools which we can use to convert uh, SPDX to Cyclone DX and uh, Cyclone DX to SPDX. But uh, when you use this tool, we can uh, lose some, uh, some information, uh, which uh, can be uh, an issue. But uh, for us, it, it was not an issue. Uh, now, um, we found uh, which format we can use. We will see how to generate uh, SBOM on both CPAS versions, Yocto and Debian. On uh, Yocto, it is fully integrated. Yocto can uh, generate uh, at each build an, an SPX 2.2 uh, SBOM. So there is nothing to, to, to do uh, to install in, in the target because it is done on the, the build side. Um, the uh, the SBOM is, is, uh, is very complex. It, uh, it generates uh, the package uh, SBOM, but also all the, uh, the, the, build, uh, the build SBOM, for instance, uh, all uh, your software you use in the toolchain. It generates one file per, uh, per package. So um, 
it can be uh, an issue be because it can you have to import uh, file 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 by file uh, on the, when you use the subparty tools. So the best way is to merge all the file into a single uh, one SBOM file. Um, the drawback we found there is no uh, Yocto do not uh, insert in, inside the SBOM the common platform enumeration. I mean, detail uh, why it is an issue uh, later. And uh, they also add some uh, vulnerability status, but um, it is not an, not very in, in common way. It is uh, added on the on, um, on on the build uh, the build as one part and uh, as command. So uh, it is totally uh, uh, unusable with uh, all uh, tracker tools. Uh, on Debian, at the opposite, there is no standard way to do it. There is some uh, some tools we can use to do to do that. Uh, basically, all the tools uh, rely on the package manager. Here uh, on Debian, it is apt. We consider apt to to sbom to to do that. It can generate uh, spdx 2.3 uh, sbom or cyclonedx sbom. Uh, the main drawback it, it is done during the uh, there is um, the, the, when the targets are, are online, so uh, we have to install uh, something on the target specific. So we have to install apt to sbom and all uh, it dependencies. And uh, as uh, as Octo, uh, this package do not uh, do not contain common platform enumeration and uh, do not contain any vulnerability status because it can't uh, insert uh, data which are not uh, inside uh, the, the IPT database. Uh, here we compare uh, the two SBOM generated. Basically, uh, Debian, it, it is an analyzed SBOM because it is done uh, by IPT to SBOM uh, after. And uh, Yocto is a build SBOM. It is, uh, it is done during the, just after the, the building. Uh, both uh, SBOM uh, contain uh, all the, the information, the, cre the creation information, uh, for instance, uh, the time time. They both contain uh, the name, all the names of the package, the version, the supplier. Uh, on the Yocto, we also have the, the license. It is out of scope of our presentation, but it, it can be also useful. So you can import it in the Phosology, for instance. On Debian, uh, we have uh, the dib file uh, download location. We do not have this on Yocto because it, it's make no, there is no, no, no sense in, uh, on, on Yocto because we rebuild everything. Um, on both, we lack uh, CPE. On the Debian, we have uh, all the, um, the files inside the, the package. But uh, only only this on Yocto, we also have uh, all the, the files with, uh, for example, all the header and uh, all the files used to compile, and also the, the file uh, which will be installed. About the dependencies on the on the Debian, we have only the, the dependencies uh, retrieved from apt, so uh, the dependencies between the package. But on Yocto, we also have uh, all the built uh, dependencies. So for instance, uh, GCC version, uh, all the TT dependencies. Now we can uh, see uh, how we can uh, use this SBOM with uh, vulnerability trackers. We, we consider only uh, open source uh, vulnerability trackers here. Before uh, to do that, uh, I just uh, introduce how to find a, a CVE. Uh, basically, there is uh, two ways to do that. Use uh, CPE, that, that I mentioned. Uh, all uh, CV database uh, can use uh, this, identif uh, this, uh, this platform enumeration sorry, to, to find an SBOM in a very accurate way. When you use the CPE, there is no fault result. Uh, the other way to do that it is, uh, it is to, to do a, a recess based on the, the package version and uh, and the package name and the package version and all, all the information you can uh, you can use. The more version, the more information you use, the more uh, accurate uh, your search will be. So the first uh, issue tracker we, we analyze is the dagger board. 
It is uh, initiated by the New York Presbyterian. Uh, it is an open source project with uh, MIT license. It is a very new uh, project because the first release uh, was in 2022. The second one, uh, just you, you can uh, see a, a screen of uh, Daggerball. Here we can see the, the our two CPAS version. Uh, both versions are uh, uh, F, uh, uh, F grade because uh, there is a lot of uh, false positives with, uh, with Daggerborn. Uh, Daggerborn can also uh, use uh, the, the score, the vulnerability score inside CV to, to, uh, to give a, a grade. Uh, sorry. The next tool is uh, Dependency Tracks. It is uh, an OWASP Foundation uh, project. It is the same foundation uh, which made the second X. It is also open source with Apache 2.0 license. And this, is, and this is a more mature project because the first release was in uh, 2013. Here we can see uh, uh, a, a screen of uh, the dependency uh, tracker. They also uh, provide uh, some uh, grade and some score, and uh, you can have a graph on it. To summarize and compare the, the, the two tools, uh, the main advantage of uh, Daggerboard it is it supports uh, all kinds of SBAM, our uh, Yocto SPDX SBAM and uh, Cyclone DX SBAM, and it can use uh, um, uh, uh, the name and the version to, to, to track CVE. And this is very important for us because we do not uh, have a CPE inside our SBAM. Uh, there is uh, the drawback, uh, it is we, we have uh, many uh, false positives and uh, there's also many drawbacks of uh, Daggerboard uh, it, because it is a, a new project, they do not uh, implement yet uh, the, the vulnerability status, so you, so you can't, uh, you can't uh, tell to Daggerboard, for instance, uh, you have fixed uh, the CVE. So they will always report the, the CVE, uh, even if we, we have fixed it. Uh, dependency track, uh, on the other hand, uh, implement this feature. It also support uh, multiple vulnerability source and external uh, analyzer. And uh, you can also import uh, a VEX file, so which is a, a file we can uh, use from the, the community which, uh, which uh, describes the vulnerability uh, fix. Uh, there is uh, the main drawback of uh, of, uh, of Cyclone Davis, uh, or uh, of dependency tracks. Sorry, it is only uh, it is only uh, Cyclone Davis as SBAM. They uh, they remove the SPDX support, and uh, it seems that they are not very interested to 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 add it back. Um, about the the. the the vulnerability tracker, they only use uh, CPE to, and package URL to, to, to find uh, the, the CPE. So uh, it completely do not work with uh, our, uh, Yocto, uh, our Yocto SBAM and it partially work with uh, the one we generate with Debian. So could you have your, our respected workflow? The answer is uh, not yet. Uh, about the SBAM, uh, it will be great to have a CPE uh, on it and also uh, to have uh, the vulnerability status in, uh, in a way that, uh, that, uh, depend that uh, dependency uh, tracker and other um, vulnerability tools can use it. The second issue is about the, the issues tracker. We do not find a, a, a tools we handle both uh, who can analyze the SBAM without CPE and uh, report uh, accurate uh, statue and uh, a, a tools where we can add uh, our, um, and manage our vulnerability statue. But uh, we are optimistic because uh, actually there is a uh, SPD3 uh, which is coming and uh, we work all the vulnerability statue and we know that the, the Octo project uh, completely rework the, the SPDX uh, generation with the SPDX3 and uh, will include uh, the, the, the vulnerability status on it and maybe CPE. On Debian, we do not uh, we do not have an answer yet. We do, we do not uh, see any changement in the in, in coming, <coughs> unfortunately. So, if you know other tools or uh, other news, 
or if you have any question, uh, don't hesitate. So thank you. We have time for questions, so yeah. please feel free if you have some. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. As I understand it, uh, CPath has the goal to be a platform for other software. How do you see the integration for the users of CPath putting this implementation uh, into practice? getting a, a sort of a total as well of not just the CPath software, but also the software running on top of CPath. Okay, so but other software need to also provide uh, s um, So it can be run in a uh, several way. Uh, there is uh, some uh, company which uh, provide uh, this, uh, this kind of uh, SBAM generation uh, just, uh, just here. And um, if you if you use container, there is also uh, some interesting tool uh, to to generate SBAM. For instance, with uh, Docker, you can just use uh, Docker SBAM uh, command. Yeah, to to yeah, doesn't matter. Yeah, to add on that, I think that um, uh, the best would be to use standard uh, yeah. all the time. Uh, if you want to deal with security, you need to use standard. Otherwise, it's gonna be too messy, and there is too much information to proceed. So that's. Also, the purpose of this presentation is to uh, um, make sure that we are using standard and to see uh, how we can uh, uh, interpret that together. And that's a pain problem we've got because individually we've got a piece of the puzzle, but we do not have everything working together. So for applications, if you are using the open source way of work, there is a lot of, uh, uh, like you say, like a lot of open source way to uh, uh, to get uh, status. So in SPDX, it's a standard open source uh, way. And for instance, all the projects of the LF Energy actually deal with SPDX uh, custom uh, fields and so on. So you should be uh, also able to get uh, to get uh, all the uh, cyber, sec cyber security information uh, from uh, LF Energy projects. So that's the way we, we need to work with. So I wanted to try and answer your question a bit and just say, I think one way you could do it is uh, SPDX has a notion of external references. So you could generate a new SPDX document, which includes a reference to the uh, like original document that the open source tooling produced with your additional kind of materials on top. Um, so you would kind of augment or enhance the base SPDX document that the upstream tool uh, built. The alternative way to do it would be like the Yocto project is effectively a build tool for custom Linux distributions. So you could just build your, uh, you know, custom applications on top of or with the existing Yocto tooling uh, and generate a new SBOM uh, kind of up as part of your build process, which uh, I would argue is the better way to do it. But, um, you know, opinions are free. So take that with a grain of salt. We have time for a question. Yeah. I don't want to be too eager if somebody else wants uh, to ask a question. But um, I have another question. Um, I, I had a lot of uh, um, conversations these days in the LF Energy context. Um, as this being critical infrastructure, what components need to be pl in place in, in the S bombs? As you showed uh, the various checks you do to be compliant. Do, do you have insight in how you take uh, carry that over into the S bomb? What does the S bomb have to incorporate, and what is maybe less of a requirement and more like a nice to have? I'm not sure I can answer to your question correctly, but um, um, the problem we had was that uh, we had a lot of false positive information, mm -hmm. and um, if you want to check um, vulnerabilities, you need to respect some. Uh, some rules. So first of all, you need to deal with CVE, but also you need to deal with CPE to clearly identify your package. Because if you just say that, I don't know, you've got uh, uh, this uh, Vim versions uh, 6.5 uh, in your context for your embedded, your embedded devices, you will have different vulnerabilities. So uh, the purpose of CPE is to clearly identify 
and it was written there. Yeah, here we go. It's not only the package and its version, uh, the package and its version. That's uh, the vendor, the product, but all the language, the targets, and uh, you know, and with that you can get all the information. So, um, if you have that, you can clearly check. Uh, your product against CV because CV are just uh, done also for uh, some targets with some uh, specific versions and so on. And then, uh, yeah, well, you can have a good status of, uh, of vulnerabilities on your target. You want to add something? Yeah, no, no, no. no, no, no. I'm Do I answer to your question? What I was more looking for, besides CVEs and identifying those, yeah. are there additional requests for compliance that you see can be addressed with ASBOMs? The other way we are dealing for cyber security is not to rate it to CV and so on. It's uh, uh, quite often you do have national offices that is giving you some recommendations. For instance, uh, for RTE, we, we have, we've got the ANSI and they are doing uh, many recommendations to implement and we implement that on CPAS. So for instance, to have like, you know, uh, specific kernel uh, configurations uh, even your tool chain, you can also tune that, um, some uh, root FS with only and so on. So this is another issue, but of course, if, <laughs> if your system is, uh, is wide open, uh, you could have a, a lot of issues, even you are, you, you do not have so much CV. So uh, it's part of that, that makes your system, uh, suitable for critical infrastructure. Yeah. So, so my conclusion is right now they live side by side, the, the S bomb to know what's in there and the components and the requirements you meet for NCE. Uh, okay. yeah. And also I just want to add something because it's, it's a big topic. Why we are also speaking about SBOM? We are speaking about SBOM because of the regulation. So you may know that uh, uh, the US government, for instance, uh, uh, said that all the critical infrastructures must have a uh, full SBOM and they also mentioned BOM itself. So uh, to identify clearly the hardware you are running with. And uh, European government is also considering that, of course. So um, uh, it must be, it's, it's a must have for every critical infrastructure project. And it's a big subject because, uh, uh, as I said, you do have a lot of information to deal with. So uh, if you want to uh, ensure that you can mitigate that, you need to follow the standards. So that's why open source is it's important and you know to uh, be compatible uh, with third parties and so on. Okay. Um, I wanted to ask you about CPE because I'm looking at, I'm not very familiar with it, but I'm looking at the one on the slide here and it says uh, Adobe is the vendor. And if I'm looking at an open source um, distribution, if I get Vim from Debian, that's very different if I get Vim from Red Hat. So is CPE a useful identifier um, for open source software? Like, does it handle that kind of uh, ambiguity of what constitutes a vendor? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not sure to, to be able to respond to your question. Uh, uh, yes, um, what studies as well? Um, no. Yes, on, on the BS we use apt 2 sbom If you want, uh, there is also a more generic tools. Uh, I, I don't remember, I, I think it's Twivy. We can deal with apt, dnf, uh, yum, so, so with that. And also uh, some package manager, uh, NPM, uh, deep, uh. Uh, Yeah, okay. Um, trying to think of how to, uh, maybe, maybe this is not a question we can answer here, but I, I, ultimately I'm concerned that CP is not a useful identifier for open source but I'm not aware of a, a useful identifier for open source components. So I was wondering uh, what your experience with that was, but it sounds like maybe you were, uh, were trying to figure that out as well, perhaps. Does, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, is my question making sense uh, or my train of thought making sense, I guess? 
Um, I think that's a no. <laughs> um, it's okay. Uh, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, we still have time for last question. Don't be shy. I'm just curious, uh, who here uh, already heard about Hasbar? That's a good start. <laughs> okay, so if you have questions, uh, I think you can also join on the project. Uh, we are an open source project, so uh, definitely uh, we are very open for discussions. Um, Cybersecurity, it's a difficult uh, topic, and uh, I tend to say that nobody have all the answers uh, on this topic, so it's good to collaborate each other and uh, you know what they are, all the LF energy uh, governance and it's very open and clear in the tool, so come to our TSC or you can check also uh, on the Slack uh, channel and don't be shy and uh, we can collaborate each other and uh, make the, the world better. Thank you.